Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our prosthodontic series. There are only a few more videos left in the series. This one will be on the provisional crown fabrication process. So this is the basic flowchart for doing crown and bridge work. It doesn't include taking an initial impression, which should always be done before you start, but from then on it's the crown prep, the final impression of the crown prep, which you pour in gypsum, usually the, the lab does that part, and then the provisional is typically made at the same appointment as the final impression, so you have something to put on the prep for now. Of course, doing a CEREC or a same day crown would eliminate this step altogether and replace the impression and gypsum steps with a digital scan. But after that, if you're doing digital or conventional, uh, the crown can be inserted after it's made and then cemented in place. And this is also the order that the videos are being made in to keep everything as simplified as possible. So let's say we're not doing a CEREC or same day crown and we need to make a provisional restoration. So the provisional restoration is designed to enhance aesthetics and provide function for a limited period of time after which it is replaced by definitive prosthesis. And this is a picture of a provisional restoration. You can tell it's a little bit discolored from the other natural teeth. And the provisional is not always the most aesthetic restoration. Again, it is only functioning for a limited period of time until the finalized definitive crown is made and that color match should be a lot more accurate and precise. So the words provisional and definitive I'm using very uh, very specifically and they're generally preferable to the more commonly used words temporary and permanent because the honest truth is nothing in dentistry is truly permanent and the word temporary kind of downplays the importance of a provisional restoration. And I already alluded to some of those things, but let's dive into that a little bit further. So these are the three principles of tooth preparation that we talked about in the tooth preparation video, but they also apply to the provisional crown or bridge because the provisional restoration is designed to protect the prepared tooth and maintain periodontal health to maintain occlusal stability and tooth function, and to provide comfort, function, and aesthetics. So it matches up really, really well with these same three principles. All right, so there are basically three M's of provisional crown fabrication. The first M is the method. So we have the direct method, which means that the provisional crown is made directly in the patient's mouth, hence direct. The indirect method means that the provisional crown is made outside of the patient's mouth, typically in a laboratory setting on a cast. So the direct method is more convenient and faster. The patient's right there in the chair. It's more commonly used, but it does require more chair side time. The indirect method is in some ways preferred due to improved patient comfort. They don't have to stay there as long because you're making the provisional ahead of time in the lab and you avoid some chemical and thermal irritation to the pulpal and gingival tissues and you might be able to get a better marginal fit by working on a cast. So there are some advantages but the direct method is typically used and the crowns fabricated directly on the prep. Now, how is the provisional crown made? Well, that's the second M, which is mold. And there are several different options for recreating the contour of the original tooth or the desired tooth structure, a uh, tooth contour rather, of the crown or bridge. So you can start with a, a prefabricated crown. And a crown can be prefabricated to fit a certain tooth number and a certain tooth size and they come in different materials. So you have polycarbonate, aluminum, and stainless steel is just some common examples. Stainless steel crowns are very commonly and routinely used in pediatrics. 
Uh, if you don't want to use a crown that's been pre-made, maybe you need something a little bit more customized, you can use a cellulose acetate crown form. And that's this thin, soft, transparent, uh, plasticky material. And you would select a proper size and shape. You would trim the template to fit the preparation without impinging on the soft tissues and then fill it in with some temporary crown material, which we'll talk about in the next slide. And then you stick this over the crown prep until the material sets and then take it off. You can also use a putty or a shim. So this would be a silicone putty matrix like you see here or a clear plastic shim that kind of looks like a clear plastic retainer. Both of those are very commonly used. You essentially take a quick impression of the quadrant you're working on before you prep the tooth, or you can take this impression on a diagnostic wax up of the area so that once the tooth is prepared, you can then fill in that area of the putty, say it's this molar that you worked on. You can fill in this area of the putty with material, place it over the prep, either in the patient's mouth, which is the direct method, or on the cast, which is indirect method, and you would allow that to create your provisional crown. So I alluded to it just, just now. And the third M is material. So our first material is PMMA, which stands for polymethyl methacrylate. And we actually talked about this material in the removable portion of this video series. So PMMA is most commonly used in the indirect method. It's a strong and has great mechanical features. It's easy to repair, but it irritates the patient via an exothermic reaction as it sets, which means it gives off a lot of heat, which you can imagine if you're fabricating provisional restoration directly on the patient's tooth, where their dentin is exposed as part of that tooth preparation, you could really irritate their pulpal tissues in that way. So that's why it's reserved and most commonly used in the indirect fashion. PEMA is polyethyl methacrylate, and this fixed some of the problems of PMMA with less irritation, but the mechanical properties were not as good as a result. So that one's not quite as commonly used. Our third option is bisacryl composite, or bisacryl composite, and this is most commonly used in the direct method. It's great for single unit provisional crowns and short span bridges. It's more brittle and has worse mechanical properties than the PMMA. It does have a bit less shrinkage, but it has less odor and minimal irritation, which are benefits to this material and why we can use it in the direct, in the direct method. It's also radiopaque on x-rays. So an example of bisacryl composite is this Luxatemp material, and here is a picture of it being inserted into that silicone putty matrix, one of those molds I talked about in the previous slide. So we cement the provisional crown in, the patient comes back in a few weeks to have the final crown delivered. The first thing we need to do is remove the provisional crown and ask the question, does this patient need to be numb? If they've been, uh, if that tooth has a root canal treatment in it, most likely they're not going to need to get numbed for this. But if they're a bit hypersensitive, then you should definitely anesthetize the patient beforehand. The reason why it's nice if they don't have to have local anesthesia is because number one, the anesthesia will make it much harder for them to confirm the occlusion of the final crown, and it can also impact aesthetics because if their lip is numb, they may not be able to smile fully. And if this is an anterior crown, you may not get a perfect representation of their full smile and their high lip line and things like that. So the other consideration is that provisional cements have eugenol. Here's that material again, eugenol, which inhibits polymerization of resin. And this is really important for the board exam because if you're using a cement that contains resin, and we'll have a video on cements, I know you guys have been asking for that for a while, I'll definitely be doing that one a little bit later, but if you have a resin cement that you're planning to use to cement the final crown, 
and you've left some of this provisional cement on the prep, you could actually inhibit that setting of the final cement. So that's an issue. So you have to make sure you remove as much as possible with the excavator, explorer, or I found the wet cotton pellet works really well before proceeding. All right, so that's it for this video. If uh, Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you're interested in supporting me, please check out my Patreon page. A huge thank you to Michael Raja and all my patrons for their continued support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions. So go check that out. The link is in the description. And thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you all in the next video.